It's March 25th, 2014. This is Doug Stout. I'm here with Tom Martin. Tom, where were you born? Where? Yes, sir. Dayton, Ohio. Okay. And what was your birth date? 9128. Okay. And when did you come to Licking County? 1962. And you were in World War II? Mm hmm. When did you enlist in? Or did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I enlisted. I was underage when I entered the Navy. And uh, uh, I think I mentioned to you that I had skipped a uh, couple of grades in school and uh, I was a youngster in high school and uh, a lot of my friends were enlisting in the service at that time. This was in 1944 and uh, no, no. And uh, <clears throat> so I thought, well, what the heck? I'll get a birth certificate and alter it and, and uh, try to enlist at 15. I did and I, well, I got the birth certificate and I altered it and <laughs> I, I think, honestly, looking back, that they knew it had been altered, mm -hmm. but they didn't say anything. Because at that time, they were dealing with quotas, you know. Right. And, uh, but anyhow, I, uh, I was sworn into the Navy, and these two friends of mine that uh, uh, powed around with all the time, and I went through boot camp at Great Lakes, Illinois, now, were, were the two friends, were they the same age as you, or were they older? No, they were older. Okay. Yeah. So they were yeah. supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. They were, they were 18 okay. at the time. And, uh, <clears throat> but, anyhow, we went off to boot camp uh, together, and from there my career developed. I... I I was fortunate in that uh, uh, the Navy apparently saw something in me that I, I wasn't aware of, but after boot camp, uh, uh, we went back, well, we came home on leave and then went back to Great Lakes, Illinois, and I went down to uh, Navy Pier in Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, went through an abbreviated communication school visual communications and uh, uh, which ultimately led to my career as a signalman okay. in, in the Navy. That's no longer a, a rate. Uh, I think they converted them all to quartermasters. I'm not sure. But <clears throat> anyhow, after that, uh, uh, they formed crews and uh, the foreign crews, they uh, shipped us down to Peoria, Illinois, where they built LSTs, mm -hmm. LSTs, landing ship tanks, amphibian type crafts. And uh, we went from Peoria, uh, Illinois, down the Illinois River to the Ohio, to the Mississippi, down to the New Orleans area, and there I was assigned to an LST flotilla staff, and uh, anyhow, from from there uh, well, we went to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and then the Canal Zone, uh, San Diego, and then to Honolulu. And uh, this is still all in 1944. And, uh, but I, in, in looking through, I did list, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the route that we had taken. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, went from Honolulu to Guam, and we talk, and, 
several other islands down through there and wound up in Guadalcanal. <coughs> Bougainville mm -hmm. in the Solomon Islands. And uh, there we formed uh, what we referred to as communication teams. Our primary responsibility was to go in and uh, number one make sure that the beach was could be secured there were no obstructions or things of this sort mm -hmm. and set up ship to shore or shore to ship communications and uh, we would direct LSTs in to various slots that we had marked out on the beach to unload whatever yeah. they were carrying. And, uh, but from Bougainville, we went up to Ley, New Guinea, and then around to Hollandia, New Guinea, and then to, uh, the Philippines, but there were several other islands mm -hmm. that we had stopped in on the way. One of the, for a 15 year old kid, well by that time I think I was, I might have been 16, <laughs> but we landed on one island that uh, uh, I don't, uh, I think I have it written down over there, but uh, the women, you know, walked around practically nude, mm -hmm. you know, and gee whiz, what an experience that <laughs> was, you know. That, did did oh, the did the guys that you were with know you were sixteen? I mean, you, no, you kept no, it up no. that you were okay. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that that never came out okay. while I was in the navy, and I never discussed it with anyone, and. Uh, <clears throat> Because uh, <laughs> if if the powers to be had found out, of course, I'd have been shipped right. back to the states. But anyhow, uh, uh, from New Guinea, we went up to Lady in the Lu or, uh, in, uh, in the Philippines, and uh, I think Mindanao, and. Uh, Oh, but backing up to Bougainville, while we were there, we were undergoing some training, as I said, and the 37th Army Division was on Bougainville, and we were to take the 37th Division, which is an Ohio Division, okay. incidentally, uh, up to uh, Luzon for the initial assault on Luzon which we did and uh, but we landed on on Luzon without incident fortunately and uh, they on well we hit two spots in Lingai and Gulf uh, which is on the western side of uh, Luzon in the Philippines but uh, Luzon and San Fabian, which was on the southwest corner. But they had uh, Japanese still, well, they occupied both islands, but they were expecting um, more on San Fabian side than uh, uh, on the Luzon mm -hmm. side. But <clears throat> There was sort of a coin flip on what team went where. Well, we, we got Luzon, as I said. The team that got the San Fabian side was blown out of the water before they got ashore. And uh, finally, the third team uh, 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 got in. but. Of course, they called in airstrikes and mm -hmm. so forth, which drove the Japanese out. But 
then after Luzon, uh, we sailed up to uh, uh, Saipan, and we were forming another landing force to go up to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see on Luzon we hit in January of uh, 45 I want to say January the 12th, but I'm not sure of that date. Right. But when we landed on Okinawa, that was April the 1st, which was appropriate April right. the first day, you know. <laughs> but <coughs> anyhow, uh, uh, we landed over on the Yantan airfield side of Okinawa, which was uh, very quickly taken over by U.S. forces, and uh, that's while we were there, uh, uh, the Japanese sent whatever they had left of their air force and for kamikaze raids, and uh, but on on uh, backing up a little bit on the way up there. Uh, our convoy was was attacked by Japanese airplanes. However, uh, it was it was kind of funny in a way, but at the same time it was scary. Uh, but we were fortunate. Instead of uh, uh, dive bombing or uh, instead of a kamikaze pilots. Mm -hmm. They dove down, they came at us uh, out of the sun, although we had radar then, and we did pick them up. We knew they were in the vicinity. Right. But when you're looking at it, you know, you can't see anything out of the sun. But they dove down uh, at a low altitude and then flew right between the rows in, in a uh, flotilla. You usually have three rows uh, 12 ships each. Mm -hmm. So they dove down between hoping that when we fired upon them we'd uh, get each other. Right. But uh, uh, of course our officers were uh, on to that so they told everybody to hold their fire. So the Japanese went out <coughs> at the end and uh, I don't know if they were aware of it or what the deal was but apparently they thought they were uh, you know out of out of range but behind us was a larger task force of destroyers and and uh, of that thing an LST <laughs> had, was the slowest ship the Navy had cruising speed was at about five knots, which is what, seven miles an hour, eight <laughs> miles an hour? Slow, right? flat bottom, you know. But anyhow, <clears throat> when, when the Japanese got out of our convoy and started to gain altitude, uh, of course the troops behind us got them, you know, so. And there, uh, there weren't too many aircraft, uh, a Japanese aircraft at the time. But anyhow, then we made it on into Okinawa. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, while sitting there, they sent in whatever they had left and, uh, you know, for a 16-year-old kid, by that time I gained a, uh, a year to watch uh, human beings uh, blown out of the air. Uh, the planes were so low and so close to us that you could see the pilots. Mm -hmm. 
and you could see that some of the smaller uh, 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 weapons, well, like 20 and 40 millimeter, mostly 20 millimeter uh, uh, guns, had gotten him, you know, and he slumped over, this one in particular slumped over, but he was headed right, <coughs> excuse me, for one of our communication ships. Mm -hmm. And somebody hit him with a 40 millimeter and he nosedived and <laughs> landed probably 30 feet uh, from the uh, communication ship. Wow. I, I knew the name of the ship, but I can't recall it now. But anyhow. So, <clears throat> one unfortunate incident there was uh, at, at Okinawa was after they had secured Yontan Airfield. Our planes, Navy planes, were using it for uh, landings and takeoff, rearming, mm -hmm. uh, rearming, and, and so forth. But one of the LSTs that was beached that had unloaded supplies, uh, uh, of course, we were. Uh, on alert uh, all the time. But a Navy ship came out of the clouds and was going to land and they thought it was an enemy aircraft so oh. they shot it down. You know, that's... But things like that and seeing uh, Japanese pilots up as close as uh, I was, or we were, you know, is uh, makes quite an impression on a young man, believe me. I would think so. But after Okinawa, then we were, we went back to Saipan, and then we were on our way to uh, Manila to pick up another convoy and go up for, no, 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 for landing on Japan. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's all right. Hey. Looks like my daughter. Oh, oh. Let me put you on pause. So... <clears throat> Anyhow, we were between Saipan and Manila uh, when we received word that uh, our Air Force had dropped, at that time, Army Air Force. It wasn't uh, separate. Had dropped uh, an atomic bomb, a couple of them. The second one, uh, Japan decided to surrender. Mm -hmm. So we picked up the convoy and then at Manila and went up to Tokyo Bay uh, and watched the proceedings, you know, from that took place on the Missouri. And uh, but I have photos, a photo of the first Liberty Party, Navy Liberty Party in Tokyo after World War II. And uh, I found that album. Did you? Yeah, it was out there in a box, plainly marked. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> anyhow, uh, then we had Liberty in Yokohama, but it was in, uh, back then. Precision bombing was more luck 
than anything else. One of the things we observed in Tokyo was <clears throat> I don't recall the embassies, but it was uh, one was Italy, then Germany was right next to it, and then another ally. Let's say English, because but it was an ally right. of the U.S. But back then, our bombs were bombers were either very, very good and skilled or lucky. <laughs> but they destroyed the German embassy and didn't touch either one or the other two. You know? Wow. So, but, uh, and then to see the uh, Emperor's Palace, among other things, was was interesting. But <clears throat> then we were after after uh, uh, Tokyo Bay. I don't quite remember, but this was in November of nineteen forty-five. What our next assignment was, was, but when we took off from uh, Tokyo Bay, about a, uh, four or five days out, we hit a typhoon, and uh, that was an experience. If <laughs> you know, when you, when you hit twenty and twenty-five foot swells with a flat bottom boat, yeah, you know it's quite a jolt. But that typhoon took us off course. I think we were headed back to Manila, if, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure. But it took us off course and we wound up in Guam again. So while sitting in Guam, I, I guess our commander of well, the flotilla commander. Uh, the original one was Captain James Scott Laidlaw, was the flotilla commander, a battle happy force driver. You know that's the reason why we got into so many different uh, 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 little raids. But and I don't recall the name of the captain then but anyhow we went back to uh, uh, pack headquarters in Honolulu uh, with a message requesting uh, guidance and uh, so they said well come back to Honolulu we'll dissolve your staff and uh, let some of the newer flotilla commanders you know take over so we did, we sailed back to Honolulu and uh, after a few days of, of leave there, which was really nice <laughs> uh, because, you know, you, 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 once you're on a ship, it is, back then, it wasn't unusual uh, to be aboard for five, six months at a time without setting foot on land, mm -hmm. you know. But anyhow, I uh, received my orders to go back to the States. And, and uh, my enlistment was a DOE, a doughboy, you know, but duration of emergency, okay. which qualified me for discharge. You know, and uh, so I got on the uh, aircraft carrier Saratoga, and we went back to uh, the states. But we landed in San Francisco at uh, uh, I want to say Navy Pier, but that that wasn't it. But anyhow. From there, I went to uh, Shoemaker, California, 
to await this charge. No, no. From the from there, I, I was sent up to uh, assigned to a communication ship, which was later used in the Bikini Atoll when they okay. tested the A bomb, mm -hmm. and it was wiped out. So it was the Saratoga, incidentally. Um, hated to see that, but <laughs> it was old. But then I went to Shoemaker. So they had, <coughs> excuse me, thousands awaiting discharge. You know. So in the meantime, they couldn't have us sitting around. So I was assigned uh, as a prison guard. Well, originally as, as shore patrol, which didn't amount to much. But most of the time, I was while there, I was assigned as a prison guard. Mm -hmm. We take prisoners out on warp details and things of that sort. And uh, so I was discharged and uh, went back to uh, Ohio. But when I enlisted in the Navy, it was up in Alliance, Ohio. Okay. And, uh, but my career after uh, the Navy, uh, I think, is more <laughs> interesting than my Navy career. Thank you, baby. No, I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you care yeah, for a cup of coffee? Yeah. But <clears throat> anyhow, now before you told me that that you had seen uh, General MacArthur. MacArthur, yeah, on the Missouri. Right. Yeah. He. Uh, that was that was unusual. Yeah. I don't know where. It uh, well, he had an old tattered hat that uh, was was a disgrace to the uniform, really. Because uh, one of the things the Navy said, I had uh, uh, my uniform had from pressing had frayed one of the pleats on my mm -hmm. collar, and I was written up for that. His hat was ten times as bad. <laughs> Plus the fact his cheeks were very, very red, and it had to be makeup. Now where he got it, I don't know. Right. Could be from one of the geisha gals, you know. <laughs> so, which uh, <laughs> I suspect. But uh, he's human too, right? right. But. Uh, Anyhow, being a signalman, one of the tools that we had was uh, what we called a long glass. Uh, it was a huge uh, telescope. Binocular. Telescope, yeah, if you will. It was like a telescope. But <clears throat> anyhow, it could bring him up just like, you know, it was right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, in in discussing with some of the troops, the army troops that we we had met, uh, they didn't uh, express too much respect for MacArthur. You know, he he was a showboat. But, and of course, the word got out that, hey, you can see MacArthur, and of course, everybody on the ship wanted to <laughs> look, you know, so. When, when you went into Tokyo after, how? I'm sorry? When you went into Tokyo, how, how did the Japanese civilians in that, was there resentment that you they could tell? They were, or? Uh, 
somewhat leery in Tokyo mm -hmm. at first because we were some of the first ones they had seen. And the Japanese, uh, of course, had said that, uh, well, I don't know what they told them, but <clears throat> they uh, were a little bit leery. But when we were down at Yokohama, they were a little more friendly. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that the younger kids were impressed with, for some reason, was uh, I used to have hair, uh, hairy arms, you know. Mm -hmm. And the kids would come up and rub your arms, <laughs> you know. They were, I had hair also. But uh, uh, on on my head, but uh, they seem to be very easy to make friends with, you know. And uh, I had, well, while sitting there talking with some of the younger one, this one little girl was cuter as a bug. And uh, I was trying to communicate with her, but I noticed one fellow sitting over here. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but it was an artist. Mm -hmm. So he made a sketch of me, you know. Oh, I see. And, and I don't know what happened to that. I think I do, but... Uh, it was in my mother's cedar chest. My sister has it, and I've asked her about it, and she claims she doesn't know anything about it. But anyhow, he gave it to me, and, and uh, which kind of surprised me. But <clears throat> we uh, wanted to go down and review the ruins down in Nagasaki and, and uh, we weren't allowed to because of the radiation, right. you know. So, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, but in, in Tokyo, walking down the street where the Japanese would just clear out of the way and, you know, lean up against the building to, to avoid us, like, but uh, Yokohama was probably a month or so later, less time than that, but just during that short period of time, you know, well, I don't know whether it was the difference between the, the two countries. Yokohama and Tokyo are fairly close together, but uh, from where we were anchored out in Tokyo Bay, you know, it was six of one and a half dozen the other. But <clears throat> as I say, they were much more responsive uh, in Yokohama than they were in Tokyo. But it was interesting. But... Uh, I wouldn't take a million dollars for the experience, but I wouldn't give you a dollar to do it over, <laughs> you know. But. So when when you came home, you were what, 16, 17 years old? 17. So then what did you do? I mean... Well, I went back to school, and uh, got my old job back that I had when I was in high school. That was selling shoes, <laughs> lady shoes, at Foresight Shoe Store in Dayton. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, I, uh, well, Arthur Murray's was advertising for dancing instructors, male dancing instructors. And it was in the evening. Mm -hmm. Well, back then, the stores closed at 5, 5 o'clock. 
So I'd get off work at Forsyth Shoe Store and go down to Arthur Murray, which was at the other end of the block of studios, and I went through their uh, uh, teacher's course. So I was teaching ballroom dancing when I met my wife, and uh, obviously I met her, well, she and my cousin were friends. I didn't know her, okay. you know, but uh, uh, at the time, well, she used to live with my cousin, and uh, well, my mother's sister, mm -hmm. and and uh, <clears throat> but I met her at a ballroom, Forest Park in Dayton, up on the north side. And uh, we uh, dated and got married in a relatively short time. It you know it wasn't weeks; it was several months. But uh, <coughs> I talked her into. Uh, going through Arthur Murray's course mm -hmm. to teach dancing. She did. Didn't like the idea of me teaching women and her <laughs> teaching men. So <laughs> she said, uh, why don't you take advantage of the GI Bill? Which I did. So, uh, Television was coming in to being at that time, and uh, they had an electronics uh, course available under the GI Bill of Electrical Engineering, but it specialized in TV. So I went to school, and unfortunately, uh, you know. Uh, it was a condensed course. You could graduate in three years uh, with a degree in electrical engineering. The only problem was their library uh, was not large enough to be recognized by the Board of Education in D.C. Uh, to become an accredited university. But the degree was recognized only by the city of Chicago. Whoopee. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but anyhow, you know, it made no difference. Uh, but during the course, my, my wife developed some uh, female problems. And uh, she wound up in a hospital. Well... Uh, I was going to school and working, as was she, but uh, we needed both incomes to survive almost, you know, because the GI Bill, you know, 125 bucks a month, that's what you got to live on. Right. You know, well, back then, that, you know, that was a significant amount, but. Anyhow, uh, we we decided, you know, to go back to Dayton, and uh, which we did, and I got into the TV business, and uh, which was lucrative at the time but demanding. I think I mentioned to you that, <clears throat> you know, at 11.30 on a Sunday night, someone would call and want me to come over and fix their set because uh, it had gone out, right. you know, and they wanted to watch whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but after, after a while, my mother suggested that uh, I go to work for the federal government. Mm 
well, they were looking for electronic uh, people or elec uh, technicians. And uh, so I did. Went to work for, uh, at that time it was Dayton Air Force Depot, mm -hmm. which later became Gentilly Air Force Station. And uh, I forgot what it was at the end. But uh, <clears throat> when the military started consolidating uh, facilities, the Army took it over and, and uh, we had to find other quarters. And eventually, while well, we developed, but anyhow, Doug, that uh, just about sums. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking now, the time to do it. You know, I'm sure there are a lot more incidents that incidences that that I uh, could bring up. That, but at my age, my memory isn't. <laughs> oh, nice Pardon me. Isn't that good? Uh, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> A lot better than mine, so well, I appreciate you taking time to do this.